So as you can see, I've drawn two rectangles on this. I'm using the screen capture uh, green, whatever it's called, to uh, screen capture the satellite view on the outer rectangle. And I'm saving that on my desktop. So once again, I drew two square uh, rectangles and I captured, screen captured the satellite image on the outer rectangle. On the inner rectangle, I'm using this tool called Create Clipped Terrain. And I'm going to click on the out, uh, inner rectangle in, to make that clipped terrain. And I'll, um, I'll probably be editing this later in this video. So if I turn off my, uh, my primary model reference, you'll see that, that what's left is the terrain that I just created um, by using that inner rectangle clip. I will be redoing this later, but as you can see, I'm exporting this terrain as a tin to a folder so that I can come back and use these the wonderful DTM tools right there. Going into the spyglass menu items, low DTM features. And this is how we're, we're, we're going to the tin that we just created and importing the mesh of that tin, or it's called the triangles, and it loads deep, it's called DTM triangles, and it loads it on the DTM triangle level. And as you can see there, we've imported the mesh, but I do a slight edit of that process later in the video. So the outer rectangle is just a drafted rectangle. We need to make it a civil rectangle to use it to get an elevation on. Um, it's still a, it's still a, just a drafted rectangle. I'll change it, but we just put a elevation on it, and now that. We turned it into a civil turned it into a civil rectangle first by featureizing it, and then we put a, uh, a constant elevation profile on it of uh, I believe 952. So now that when we go into our 3D view, you can see that we've got that rectangle represented by a rectangle in 3D at elevation 952. Coming in here to our raster manager, which is how we're going to import the satellite photo into 3D. And just go to our desktop and grab it there. And we're going to attach it by editing the place interactivity interactive to yes, and we're just clicking on those triangles right there. Clicking on that outer triangle that has the profile ele elevation of 952. And we, we go into the settings to the material settings. This is important. Uh, the open the palette and you have to use DC drape. And once that once that palette or material is loaded, you have to assign it to the level of DTM triangles. You can see that it uh, assigned that DTM triangle level. And now we go to the raster manager again, and that column right there 
is the drape column so you have to click that and then turn the display style to smooth and once you do that your satellite image will be draped over the draped over the DTM triangle mesh and I think that that uh, the blue rectangle right there I think is my outer rectangle that I use to line up the satellite image with which I think you can get rid of that because it was just used as a, uh, a reference. So now I'm bringing in my model for this area. I'm turn I just turned off my satellite image that's draped because I'm I'm grabbing all of my top surfaces for my model and I'm creating a tin or I'm creating a surface for those so that I can export it or use its boundary as you'll as you'll see in a second so I've made the uh, the the tin the DTM had a, a really large maximum triangle length so I shortened that down to three so that it is basically just the outline of my model I'm exporting that DTM as a tin and then once that is exported I can use again the DTM tools in the 2D view to import the boundary of my models DTM so click on the tin and then just use this setting the tin hull and turn off the display only load that up again and there's the boundary of our model now we're going to make a new uh, in-place ground terrain I didn't need I didn't need that models uh, top surface DTM anymore we're going to once again use the clipped terrain tool we're going to click the internal this time click on our reference terrain which was the original in place that inner triangles DTM and the clipping element we're using the models hull and when that's all done we just click through the rest of it and we've made a new DTM and it should be called I think we have renamed it something something void right there and if we turn on those triangles you can see that we've got the models void the, 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 the area voided in the middle so we're going to export that DTM as a tin to some folder and when we've exported it successfully use the DTM tool again load DTM features and we're going to load the mesh of that new tin that has the void in the middle And there's the triangles locate, located on the DTM triangle level. I'm going to turn on the satellite view again. And I think we're going to turn the display style to smooth. And there you've got nice draped, turn off the level that the DTM is on which is I always use GPK to death uh, we're turning on the models reference so we get those top surfaces and turn off that GPK death level which our DTMs are on and now we've got well that's this is just a nice view 
of the drape surface with the model in there. And that looks nice, but one thing that I like to do to really make the elevation stand stand out is to exaggerate the Z elevations. And I made a copy of those top surfaces and moved them to the side, but you could do this on the surfaces that Maybe I'm just testing here, but what happens as you see if you exaggerate the Z, which I did by a scale of five, it screws up the satellite drape. And why it does that, I I don't know. But I just made a reference line on the corner right there for my elevation. I'm moving the model's top surfaces aside and Maybe you didn't catch that, but I grouped all of the top surfaces of my models into its own element. And when it was off the main grid of that terrain, I then did my scale, I then did my scale exaggeration, scale of five. And then you get that nice exaggerated view which I just like a lot it really makes things stand out and um, now that that's done I do another thing that I like which is I make a what I call a flood plane and I'm just drawing in 3d a drawing in 3d a rectangle that I'm going to turn the color blue because I think of blue when I think of water and I'm going to make a save view here of that top 3D view. I'm going to open up another view and use that save view to duplicate that top view right here. And once that duplicated that top view, uh, I will use the rotate view controls to rotate that to a front view. I'm going to highlight that blue, that floodplain. Once it's highlighted, I can grab it in the front view and I can, don't click on it, but click on the screen so that you don't move the plane the rectangle, but the effect of it is you can micro, yeah, don't click on, don't, you can change the elevation of that flood plane by moving it in that front view and you get the effects, you get the simulation of a flood which is a really, really good way of checking to make sure your water is going where you want it to go. And it takes a little practice, but it's, it's a nice effect. And you can rotate that exaggerated view and it's a nice effect. There you go.